Hey, and good Monday morning, everybody. Meteorologist Greg Majeski back with here on the Weather News YouTube channel with your Hurricane Central update here on Hurricane Melissa. And I just wish it was under different circumstances. I wish everything that we've been talking about for the last few days uh, was not going to come to pass, but that's what we're going to be dealing with here for today. And again, I appreciate you guys coming in here to get an update here for this morning. Now, before we get going in this update, if you're coming to this after the live broadcast and you like a no-nonsense approach to weather, I'd like to extend an invitation to please consider subscribing to the channel, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, if you ever have a weather-related question, you can always post it down below. I do appreciate you guys' support. Anyway, let's go ahead and break it all down for you here as we're looking at a very powerful Category 5 hurricane that is expected to make landfall in Jamaica as a Category 5. If we're talking winds in excess of 160 miles per hour, and the pressure continues to bottom out this morning. To give you an idea, the 5 o'clock advisory had it at 923 millibars. The pressure's now down to 913. And I seem to recall there was a model last uh, early in the week that was had it down to 900 millibars, and <clears throat> it definitely wasn't too far off. Uh, the water temperatures down there have been pretty warm and uh, definitely looking very intense. So right now, kind of breaking this down for you, the hurricane force winds only going about 30 miles from the center. And the tropical storm force winds a little, little bit larger than yesterday, about up to about 195 right now. So a little bit setting out. They've had a lot of heavy rains already in Jamaica here for uh, uh, over the last day or so. They're going to have some more that's going to follow. But the storm should start moving here shortly as it's going to be getting tugged on by a trough. And get picked up and moved on out but boy the, the devastation it's going to bring is going to be traumatic let's go take a live look there in jamaica right now <clears throat> this is the kingston harbor area again you can see how choppy those waters are definitely a lot rougher than they were yesterday evening when we were checking in down there but those waters are going to continue to pile up in that bay now keep in mind the kingston's on the right side so all that water all that storm surge is going to keep piling on piling on piling on into that bay so uh, the flooding into that bay is going to be uh, be tremendous uh, with all that, especially once it starts uh, cranking up and get moving. So here's the uh, different cameras out there. I've been kind of watching this uh, this morning. A little breezy, not too bad. there. They've had uh, periods of rain here and there. Uh, the Turks and Caicos, they have a hurricane watch up. That's in that bottom right-hand corner there uh, as they're going to be dealing with some hurricane conditions there as well. But uh, again, conditions in Jamaica today are going to be going downhill and when we do our evening update or after our five o'clock update later today uh we'll be just to see if the cameras are still on or not we'll have to watch closely and see if that if that stays up or not but uh, the the entire power grid is probably going to get not going to get shattered and obliterated and again unfortunately i do suspect we're going to have some deaths you just uh, you get a storm of this magnitude in a, a basically a third world country like jamaica uh it is going to be very devastating for that uh, small island nation so Again, we'll, we'll just have to say our prayers and hope that folks uh, that he and get to take his best shelter as they can under the circumstances uh, as this thing begins to come on in. So again, there it is its proximity to the United States. So you got an idea where this is. And uh, we'll take a look at that storm track again, kind of taking you directly uh, over Jamaica, over Cuba, into the southern uh, southern portion of the Bahamas, and then cutting on right out to sea. Looks like it get fairly close to Bermuda uh, as we go later into the week. So Again, a very, very powerful storm. Just to look at the infrared imagery on this thing. This thing, I mean, it looks, you can look right down into this thing. It is such a beast uh, to see a Category 5 hurricane. And uh, it should start making that turn here shortly. Now, if it drifts more to the west, this track might shift a little bit more to the west. Uh, but again, you, you're going to start seeing that, that water uh, really start to pile up this way. Again, you get the water kind of pumping around this way. So once this thing starts moving northward, it's going to bring all that water with it. Uh, with that storm surge along the coastal areas. And then, obviously, the flooding concerns will be traumatic as well. They've already had some rains. Uh, I think, I mean, total, the totality of this thing will be 20 inches plus, I'm pretty certain, uh, as they've already had a plenty of rain here in the last day or so uh, from the outer bands. have been kind of feeding on through that area, and they're going to get some more significant, steadier, heavier rains as the storm starts to approach the coastline and moves on across. So you kind of see the track there. Again, takes it across the island of Jamaica, and then it goes, makes this borderline here going up toward the Cuba area uh, as we go into uh, later. It should be down to, back to a category three at this uh, as it goes in toward the 27th. So it uh, goes in toward uh, the, the 29th, I'm sorry, 29th overnight. So that's what we're looking at right there is this bad boy starts to get moving and uh, and really kind of hits that, hits that stride here in the next day or so. So uh, really next 24 hours is really going to start moving. So 
tonight's the night. Hopefully they got everything uh, ready to go there along the beaches and along the inland areas. And they got folks away from the coast. They got folks, you know, locked down, ready to go because there's really not much a place to go. It's a, it's an island. Uh, I would say maybe the far east coast at this point. Yes, when we first were tracking this, I was saying the west coast because we thought it was going to be more toward the the eastern side of the island. Now it looks like it's going to be more of the western side of the island. So uh, there's just no real safe place to go. You just got to have to batten down the hatches and just hope for the best. Okay, let's go take a look at the the, the, the model ensemble here again. This is again showing it all has not changed. This has been staying very consistent as we're looking at this big path kind of swathing right through here. Going around that area of high pressure out here is it's getting picked up by this big trough coming on down. That's going to pick this thing up and take it on out into the open Atlantic. And uh, again, it, it hopefully will be the last storm we got to deal with this season. We've only got, you know, what, a month and three days left in the hurricane season. But uh, this one's going to be the one uh, best known for this, this season, unfortunately. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast models. Again, we're going to look at it, the 500 millibar height anomaly. Again, what's driving this scenario here? Again, we've got this piece of energy here that's going to start the initial tug. And then this one that's dropping down behind us, really going to pick it up and accelerate it out. So again, we'll kind of watch that timestamp there in that upper right corner as it begins to make that tug to the north. And then this big trough fairly really accelerates. It really gives it a nice little kick in the butt. Boom, kicks it right over Bermuda as it kicks on out and uh, accelerates on out. So uh, again, this, this tropical system is going to be responsible for the pattern change across the eastern third of the United States. It's going to keep below normal temperatures in place here, uh, probably at least through the first look, eight or nine days before we probably see a pattern shift heading toward Thanksgiving uh, across the east. All right, so that is that. We'll go over to the actual uh, precipitation mode here. So it's this piece of energy here that's going to do the initial tug. That's the initial one. And it starts to tug on it just a little bit. And then we wait for this big low. Look at that big upper low kind of dropping to the southeast. That's really going to accelerate it out. See, it just kind of really kicks it on out. Boom. And kicks on. That's uh, making a bee beeline for Bermuda. Bermuda's already got hit once over here this season. <laughs> get hit again. Uh, looks like they're making another one. It's going to get pretty close to there as well. I think uh, Umberto got pretty close to them. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the, get the rainfall amounts. Again, keep in mind, they've already had a lot of rain into the island. These are you know, showing 12, 14 inches. So, you know, they've already had quite a bit. So, again, the totality of this event, I think 20 inches plus. And, again, you got mountain terrain there that acts as additional lift. So as that moisture is streaming up, it kind of squeezes it out like a sponge. So, and, again, the, what typically happens with these forecast models, they tend to underestimate rainfall totals that's 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 very typical uh when it comes to systems like these all right so let's look at the the one of the hurricane models here <clears throat> again look at this very tight very organized storm the wind feels pretty tight at this point but once it starts getting tugged on and starts coming northward uh it, like a skater letting its arms out that wind feels going to expand out it's going to get bigger as the wind speed starts to drop a little bit so it's going to hit Jamaica as a five and be a three by the time it gets up toward Cuba. All right. So again, we're going to be watching this thing come on closer here. And it looks like right now in this particular model, this one's a little bit further west. Uh, and we'll see if that westerly jog continues here. But again, the whole right side of the island here is on the right side of the storm. Right side of the storm's always the worst. And it's showing landfall here going in toward tomorrow morning early. All right. And then it, it cuts right across the island and then it cuts right back to the right. So this one's a little bit further to, to the west, a few miles. Again, we're talking tens of miles here, folks. So we got to watch this closely. This thing comes on across and then uh, makes a cross across Cuba. And then look at that wind field. It just really opens up. I mean, it's got almost double in size, I think, here compared to this. Look, look how tight this thing is right there. And then look how tight, look how much larger the wind field is once it gets up into the Bahamas. So uh, the Bahamas is going to feel this uh, uh, pretty, pretty dramatically as well. It just won't be quite as strong, obviously, once it gets up that way. So that is our track right there as it comes on up to the north. And we're getting some severe thunderstorm warnings this morning along the, along the Florida Gulf Coast this morning, but not related to this. So again, that's what we're looking at right now. Let's go back to that live shot again here. Uh, again, kind of looking at the uh, the cameras down there. And I keep re always got to tell YouTube to recycle because if you just leave it on there and you don't refresh it, it'll it'll be an old image. So uh, again, you can see the, the, the water's there. Look at the water's up here. Wow, you can see the water's actually uh, spraying up here. See that? Look at that. Wow. Kind of see kind of really kind of getting it and being forced into the bay there. So um, it'd be interesting to see how long the power stays on. How long does the, the uh, circumstances 
uh, stay in there. Everybody, they've had day, the only positive thing is that the Jamaica and people they've had, I think the last flight flew out yesterday and they've had days to really prepare for this. So hopefully that means we get a minimal loss of life uh, as the storm kind of moves on in. So you can see the mountainous terrain. You see the, see the, the higher mountains there in the background there. <clears throat> so again, hopefully folks are, ta- are heating all the evacuations and everything else. There's a guy out there on a bicycle there uh, kind of going through there. But uh, the streets are pretty much deserted. Uh, it was interesting two days ago when I was looking out here. People were just kind of out about doing their own thing, not really worried about it. But uh, not today. Looks like things will be um, be looking a lot different. And then the Turks and Caicos, uh, that'll be later in the week. We'll have to watch them closely as, this, as the storm comes through the southern Bahamas as well. All right. So there is y'all's update here for this morning. Again, there is our storm. Let me go back over to Radar Omega here. I'm going to pull back out here a little bit. Again, we're watching. There's Montego Bay. Of course, we got a lot of Montego Bay, a lot, a lot of uh, touristy spots up there. You got some down here in Kingston as well, Spanish Town. So, again, we'll see if this track shifts to the west like that last hurricane model was showing there, uh, potentially shifting off to the west. Again, appreciate you guys checking us out. Who we got there? All right. Razin's out there. We got Edith. We got Carrot out there. Good morning. Florence. Good morning, Florence. Julia. Good to see you, Julia. Donna. Porter, Tyler, our good buddy Tyler out there. Appreciate you guys checking out the channel this morning. Keep you updated. So the next update we're going to have is going to be uh, a little bit this afternoon. i got to take my daughter to a doctor's appointment today. i got to take care of that. But I will be back up for a 5 o'clock update at that point. And at that point, uh, again, uh, this is in 18 hours. This is 2 o'clock in the morning. You see, it's not moving all that much. This is by 18 hours from now. <laughs> or my five o'clock is going to be somewhere right in between here. So it's not going to move all that much. Again, we're still slowly moving here. Uh, it'll be tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, uh, when we do our live, I think, I suspect we'll probably be right near landfall. And uh, we may stay on for a little bit extended uh, coverage uh, during that time uh, if it looks like we got landfall at that time. So it looks like tomorrow morning looks like that's tracking as your landfall. Now, I'm hoping that the eye wall goes through some sort of replacement cycle. Uh, It really doesn't matter at this point. It's all semantics, especially when you're dealing with a Category 5 hurricane like this. Uh, But if it does go through an eye wall replacement cycle, that will allow the winds to diminish a little bit. And I mean, mean, is there a big difference between 160 and 140? Not really, per se, as far as as the damage that we're going to see here on the island, because it's going to be a major hurricane regardless. Uh, But if it weakens a little bit, we'll take it. I mean, we'll take whatever we can get at this point. So you guys just, again, pray, pray for the folks in Jamaica, those up in Cuba, those in the Bahamas. And uh, thank you, Tenzi. I appreciate you for subscribing. Thank you very much. And uh, again, we'll just kind of watch and see what happens with this. We will be on again tomorrow morning. And I do suspect tomorrow morning we'll, we'll be tracking this thing as it's making landfall at that time. And like I said, I very I, I highly doubt we'll have any of these cameras except for maybe the Turks and Caicos up at that time we'll we'll see again the hurricane force winds are pretty tight they're only going about 30 miles from the center so uh if if that stays down maybe maybe the entire power grid of the island doesn't get knocked completely out i suspect it probably will um as this thing makes landfall but uh but again it's gonna be um pretty tough going again it's got some of the touristy locations there uh, along the bay there uh look at all the but it's, you just see the water just piling up in there just really really bad to see that All right, that's y'all's update for today. You guys take it easy, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you after the 5 o'clock advisory. I use about 5.30-ish, giving about 30 minutes to get all prepped, make sure I got all the things ready to go. We'll get you updated at 5.30, and then uh, tomorrow morning, it looks like we'll be looking at landfall at that time.